Uh, blow your horn if so. Oh, we got one cup. Hey, Amen. I don't want to miss anyone. I don't want you to miss out on this great opportunity. Hey, Amen. To give to the glory of God. Hey, Amen. We'll be more than happy to assist you. Hey, Amen. In whatever your needs may be. Amen, amen. We're going to prepare to go further in the service. I remember many years ago, thousands of years ago to be exact, Moses went up to the mountain and when he came down, they had made a golden calf. I heard somebody say, the reason why they made a golden calf, because they didn't have enough gold to make a cow. So they made a little small calf. Look like history is repeating itself small statue. Not a big one, but a small one. And that's all we need to say about it. History will repeat itself if you're not careful. That's why I say to you, be ready. Amen. When the Lord returns, if you're asleep, you won't miss it. Amen. Be prepared and be ready. For the Lord may come in an hour when you think not. Amen. Amen. At this time, amen, if everybody has been served, we have any offering at this time we get prepared for another selection just before the uh, announcement but the announcement first so we'll have the announcements and then right after that we'll have a selection amen next speaking voice we'll hear after that will be none other than our very own amen Ella Ella Simpson let's receive amen all of them with a hearty hearty amen and a horn <laughs>
Seventh chapter of the book of Romans. The seventh chapter of the book of Romans, verses 12 through 15. Amen. We certainly uh, pray for those that are in the hospitals. tells us that man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why it's so important, so vitally important, amen, that we have a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Romans 7, verses 12 through 15. Amen. It's a familiar passage, yet very moving. If you have it, say amen. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me, by that which is good. 
that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And my subject on today, warfare with sin. Warfare will sin. Gracious God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you on today. We pray for another opportunity. We pray to break the bread of life, which is food for our soul. For you had it written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now have your way. I move me out of the way, and you have your way. I might speak to your people and encourage your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Warfare with sin. Now, this subject called sin, we hear it all the time. We hear about sin all the time. Amen. But looking at this seventh chapter of Romans, Paul dives deep into the subject. And he's coming at us from the carnal side as well as the spirit. He opens up the chapter strikingly dealing with the law as respect to marriage between the man and the woman. Now you know how controversial a subject that is to preach and to teach on. Everybody Amen. When it comes to that, it's all over the map. And you wonder why would they be all over the map when the word of God is pretty plain, but it's because of the carnality of man and woman. And this is what Paul deals with in this chapter. First time you see sin... In this chapter, the word sin is in the fifth verse where he says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Amen. The soul, the Bible says, the soul that sinned shall die. Back in the third chapter of this same writing to the Romans, back in 3 and 23, Paul said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Praise the Lord. So as Paul deals with sin and the believers struggle with sin. It's amazing that the apostle uses himself as an example. He said that there was a warfare going on in his members. His flesh was warring against his spirit. Oh, can, they, can anybody witness to that? Can anybody witness to the fact that it seemed like sometimes 
that all of us are bipolar. <laughs> Seems like sometimes that all of us are schizophrenic. When it comes to dealing with sin in our members. Paul here in this 14th verse, he says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold on the sin. A carnal person, the Bible says, even Paul in his writing, cannot please God. So your natural man naturally cannot please God. No matter how hard you try, you're going to struggle when it comes with sin. Oh, I wish I could get a witness in here. Paul talking about this warfare going on in his life. He says, for that which I do, I allow not. You ever heard the expression, do as I say, not as I do. And this is what Paul is saying here. He said, for that which I do, I allow not. See, I do things that I don't allow other folks to do around me. Oh, I hope I'm touching the nerve today because it touched my nerves. Amen. This truth that the apostles Paul, Paul is speaking to the Roman believers and speaking to us today because it is prevalent. Sin is real. Sin is real, but look at the seventh verse of this same writing. Paul say, uh, what shall we say then is, all sin, God forbid, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So when Paul was out in the world doing his thing, it was natural. But when he got converted, when he got saved, now he's in a struggle. He is in a mortal struggle to do that which the law says is right. And as he's testifying here, he's letting us know without doubt that the law is good. 12 verse, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy and just and good. So it ain't no question about God's law. It is good, it is holy, and it is right. But what about us? What about this thing, this carnality in us that pulls us, tugs at us? Paul says that when he was out in the world, he did what he wanted to do. But when he learned about the thou shalt nots, he became disturbed. Because now he was called to a higher standard. But see, he's dealing with something that's deeper than the thou shalt not. He's dealing, amen, with the spirit of man. And he's appealing, amen, to that which God has given us. God gave us the Holy Ghost that it might lead us guide us and direct us and help us in those times when we're struggling with our flesh. He's given us this higher calling. But before I get going too far, we have to realize how real sin is. Sin is unrighteousness. Sin is ungodliness. Sin is injustice. People are evil. People are mean. People are hateful. And they do bad things. And see the funny thing about it, we got people in church, people that are saved, people that are filled with the Holy Ghost, that still struggle with their carnality. They still struggle with 
choosing to do what is right as opposed to what is wrong. Can I get a witness out there? Every last one of us, every last one of us are prone to sin. The Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. And God is not a lie. God tells the truth. We can hide sin all we want to. We can hide it from our families. We can hide it from our co-workers. We can hide it from our church members. But God sees it all. He knows our uprising. And he knows our downsetting. He knows what we're going through. So what I want to do, saints of God, even though I know that this message is stepping on everybody's toes, we still have to recognize that we are in spiritual warfare. When Paul wrote into the Ephesian church, he told us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So that devil is real. Sin is real. And if you don't take it seriously, it will destroy you. Can I get a witness out there? The devil is busy in our world today. He's busy in our individual lives. We see it in our communities. We see it in our homes, on our jobs, even in government. And this evil influence that Paul is talking about that pulls at us and tugs at us and tries to distract us from doing that which is good. We can see it overwhelming a lot of people, producing all kind of disturbing events in our world, disturbing events even in our lives. People having trouble overcoming addiction. People having trouble hormoning. People having trouble Amen. With all kind of things. Right. Lying and backbiting. Yeah. Jealousy. Sin is running rampant in our society. And what do you hear? Where can you hear the truth? Where can you hear the remedy at? When there's so many competing voices on social media telling you that it's all right to do all these sinful things even putting a stamp on it. You listen to a lot of the music, a lot of the TV programs. All these things now are filled with sinful acts. We see that depravity is being played out all in front of us. But those of us that have given our lives to Christ, how do we deal with keeping ourselves in line? How do we deal with these distractions? These things that people will make you think uh, that it's all right to do. Uh, Paul gives us a re remedy. First of all, he lets us know uh, that this thing that we dealing with in our spirit uh, is not nothing do nothing new. Uh, for he has dealt with it himself. Uh, in that 15th verse, he said, I got to read it again. Uh, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. A lot of times I find myself in the same situation where I said I wasn't going to do this. Right. Next thing I know, I done done it. And I got to go down on my knees and call on God. Paul knew that the law was good, but he struggled with the evil that was in him. All Christians, uh, we got to be honest. Uh, Paul wasn't just talking about himself, uh, but he was talking about all of us. Uh, Paul is talking about the battleground. Uh, he's talking about the warfare uh, that is going on in your mind, uh, going on constantly. Uh, where you got to make the right decisions, uh, where you want to do what's pleasing in God's sight, uh, but it seems like uh, 
evil is always present. <laughs> Don't you think uh, that you're better than somebody else? Uh, maybe you doing a little bit better uh, controlling your emotions. Uh, maybe you doing a little bit better uh, staying away from addiction. Uh, but don't you think uh, that you're different from anybody else? Uh, well, the Bible says uh, that we all have sinned. Uh,
God is able. We know and we believe what the Bible says that if you continue in sin, you're going to go to hell. We believe that. But don't you know that if you continue in sin, yeah, you're going to go to hell. But you can catch hell right here, too. That's the truth. You can catch hell right here before you die. That's the truth. See, we are punished for sin, and we are punished by sin. Praise the Lord. The Bible said the ways of a transgression are hard. Hallelujah. This thing that we have to struggle with in our members is nothing new. It's testing your faith. Because it ain't anything that you can do that's going to earn you a trip to heaven. The price has already been paid. Yeah, yeah. It's up to us to struggle and pray and seek God. You know, to balance it out between what we are and what God wants us to be. It's a formidable fight. It's a difficult fight. It's a struggle. That's the reason why Paul dealt with it. And he used himself for example. Now if the apostle was struggling with choosing between good and evil, choosing between what's right and what's wrong, what's going to make you exempt? If we be honest, we all know that we have to struggle with our choices, with our decisions. And we make bad decisions, cause all kinds of problems in our lives. We see people making bad decisions, even on you know, the national levels, in our communities, causing problems in multiple hundreds of thousands of people's lives because of the selfishness, the egos, the entitlement, all of this stuff going on that we are prone to do. It's nothing new. People are evil. People are mean. These things are in our world. And it manifests itself in our lives at times. But Paul is encouraging us to let us know that we can hold on. Yeah. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Keep trusting and believing in God. Keep doing what's right. Keep trying. Don't give up. Amen, because we have an exceeding great reward that God has for those that love him. I hope I said something, amen, to encourage your hearts to help you be mindful of this struggle that we all can attest to, we all can testify to. None of us can look at nobody else and act as if we are better. It is Christ that died. It is Christ that died for our sins. Amen. Lord, we have the money. We all Amen. 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 What a word. We just got news that Lewis Nix took off at 29 and found him dead today in the farm. Life and death for sure. Death for sure, saints. It don't have to do with your age. It don't have anything to do with COVID-19. You're going to die. After the death of judgment. Preach his spoken. He's preached a powerful word. Let's give God praise. Just lift those hands and give praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.